Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Today we're gonna to be continuing our HF Man Pack series that's built around the TPA 817B and uh, the bag that I'm using for the deployment. So today's goals are to flex our ability to do a field expedient digital uh, communication using Winlink. We're gonna test a 40 meter Nivis dipole. And uh, I wanna show you the contents of how I personally and packing out my uh, new go kit, soda kit, MCON kit, whatever we want to call that. So I'm going to find a place. Uh, hopefully I'll be there in about 45 minutes. And uh, yeah, we'll talk more about it. All right, guys. So one of my other goals was to see how well Nivis performs when there are obstacles like hills and other uh, geographical uh, or topographical. You know what I mean? Uh, land formations in the way or uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. So I'm going to bushwhack just a little bit and I'm going to get up on that very small ridge there where all of these Palo Verdes are. I typically don't have the luxury of trees when I'm on a summit. So let's see how uh, well I can set up my 40 meter dipole. Still a little warm. So we're at um, the spot that I had picked out. I set up the uh, 40 meter dipole. I was able to use two Palo Verdes. Um, right now it's about four feet off the ground. And then I didn't have quite enough room on the far leg, so I went ahead and used my trekking pole and then secured it on the base with a couple of rocks. So let's talk about, uh, this video is gonna get a lot of criticism. It's already been uh, kind of polarized, especially on one of the Facebook groups. In fact, the post was removed. So I want everybody to know that the kit that I'm gonna talk about is specifically designed for my mission objectives and the way that I like to operate the types of modes, the length of time, and this is what works for me. So I'm not telling anybody what to do. So let's take a look at this kit. Um, this is basically my new Go Kit, MCOM kit, and Soda kit. It is designed around really two core systems, actually three. Uh, the first is the bag selection. This is the Hazard 4 objective. It is a uh, camera bag. And I've picked it for a number of reasons. One, it allows me to put all the gear I need in a modular system. It has a grab handle so that I can grab and go. It has Molly or Pals webbing on the back so I can attach it to the side of my pack. Uh, in fact, today, I was able to stick this fully inside of the pack. Uh, last weekend, I tried it on the side with the soda activation. Both work fine, so if I need the room for other support gear, uh, I like having those quick disconnect Molly strips on the side. Um, it also has more molly on the side, so I connected my very small Condor uh, admin pouch that contains the 40 meter dipole. So for me, the bag is really what allows me to operate in the way that I want to in a very field expedient way. Uh, the second piece of the kit, and we'll get into this later, is the TPA 817B uh, pack frame from Armorlock. And the vertical nature of this kit is really, or of these frames, are what has completely changed my operating style. Um, in fact, people are talking about the weight here as being a problem. It's not for me. Um, I don't mind huffing a large uh, amount of weight. In fact, I don't think it's that bad. This entire kit, digital, the antenna systems, the coax, uh, some miscellaneous bits and pieces, come in at 9.5 pounds. But what's great about this, you probably won't be able to see this, it stands straight up and I can hunch over it and I can actually access all of the controls. And uh, for me, that is really the, the game changer. And then obviously I'm running the 817, 818. In my case, it's actually the 818ND. And uh, on six watts, I was able to make a DX contact, contact to France the other day on SSB. I'm able to activate my summits. I'm able to uh, get into my local repeater on VHF. I'm able to do um, simplex on VHF if I'm in the right location. Uh, you'll see today we're gonna do a demo on digital and I have all my power management pieces here. But uh, yeah, the frames do add a little bit of weight to it. Uh, I'll put specs down below. Uh, but you have to bear in mind, I used to carry an aluminum table with me to set the uh, Yesu on top of, and I was running the portable zero rails. So 
I actually can deduct that weight and this is much easier to to manage and the um, uh, creator inventor of the TPA pack frame uh, Zeth he's actually a machinist and former military and he had a very similar mission objective as myself of a field expedient kit so when I'm operating VHF UHF all I need to do is pull out the radial uh, whip antenna and screw it onto the relocation mounts here at the top turn on the radio and this is not the subject of the video pull out the hand mic and I'm on in about 30 seconds 30 to 60 seconds um, digital takes me about 90 seconds to set up but uh, it's pretty much the same situation he basically wanted to have Nivis style configuration between uh, 2 megahertz and 10 megahertz to communicate with his brother who's about 90 minutes away from him and he's running the same kit in that fashion where he just connects his HF antenna he's on the air and making local contacts without any infrastructure so keep that in mind part three of this video we're going to go ahead and take the whole frame apart I'll walk you through all the pieces give you dimensions weights how I'm connecting things but suffice it to say, my entire kit now is built around the ArmorLock TPA-817B. I even have power distribution with the Buddy Pole Power Mini and a 4.5 amp hour by Wino in the back. And what's cool about this system is that this is a solar charge controller first and foremost, but it's providing power distribution for the entire system. So... Uh, there are two 12 volt outputs. I'm only using one for the radio, have an extra one if I want to use it. And then I'm using the uh, 5 volt USB out to power the Raspberry Pi. And then I positioned this on the top here, uh, the buddy pole, so that I could also quickly connect my solar panels. And I carry with me the 20 watt folding solar panel from Power Film. And um, I get about 800 milliamps out of that, and it completely tops off this battery. So that's my operating style. I don't mind the weight. I like the tactical nature of this bag selection along with the vertical nature of the TPA-817B. It just suits my operating style. And I know people are going to complain about heat. For me, it's not really a problem because my goals are very limited comma windows, if you will. And uh, I have never served in the military, but um, I do like the idea of being able to set up comms quickly and be done. So when I do a soda activation, 10 to 15 minutes is my operating time on single sideband. It's not going to cause a problem. Uh, we're going to do a demo with Winlink. Hopefully it works. That typically takes 5 to 10 minutes and then I'm done operating. So this is not for contesting. This is not for doing um, full duty cycle digital stuff like an FT8. For me, I see this kit as a mechanism for me to get comms up and ready quickly and have everything I need. All right, guys, we're going to try to do this in one take. In fact, I only have one GoPro battery and I'm using the iPhone 6. So we're going to go ahead and see how quickly we can set up digital. And I can't promise that we're going to make a Winling connection with this antenna set up, but that's the plan. So the first thing we're going to do is pull out the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And I have uh, Pat Winlink and uh, the RDOT modem configured to start on startup, um, in addition to the uh, CAT control. For cable management, I have everything coming out into this outer pocket. And there are three cables here. We have the CAT control for uh, being able to control the, the radio so I don't have to manually tune it. We have the Sobrant USB, and this is the sound interface for the RDOP modem. And then I have a dongle here for the uh, 5 volt power, and all of this is being driven off of the 5 volt connector on the um, Buddy Pole Power Mini. So that is it for setting up digital there. And I do have the uh, Wi Fi enabled as a hotspot, and I'm connecting directly to it with my phone. Next, we'll turn on the radio. And I'm gonna turn this down just a bit till we're ready. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn on the Raspberry Pi. Now, it'll take uh, about 30 seconds for the access point to kick on. So 
So I'm gonna have a sip of coffee. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is go to our settings and just make sure that we are paired with the Wi-Fi on the, um, the Pi. And as you can see there, it's already set to ham one. Everything is configured to start. All I need to do now is launch Safari and go to the IP address on the Pi of Pat Winlink. And I've got that on 192.168.2.1. And there we go. So now we're just gonna go to the menu, go to action, connect, and I'm gonna show the RMS list. We're on a 40 meter dipole, and I'm gonna go ahead and try my luck at a station I'd like in California, Whiskey 6 Bravo India, 615 kilometers, and click connect. We'll turn on the volume. And we're transmitting right now. All right, guys, we have a really high SWR. Again, this is not my typical antenna deployment. I'm going to go ahead and try a uh, frequency that's a little bit um, higher up, not by much, and we'll see if that works. All right, we're going to try this one. It's only 71 kilometers away, and we're going to go ahead and click connect and see how that SWR is. Yeah, it's still very high. All right, guys, so uh, it's too bad that this didn't work out. Um, I was really hoping to be able to show you a successful Winlink connection, but I'll take you to the house and we'll do it there. Um, and that's why we come out here and train. But really the point is if the antenna was resonant correctly uh, with the deployment, the time it took me to set up the Raspberry Pi was a matter of 45 seconds. Um, and that was really it. And with the cat control and having the iPhone connected to the, uh, the access point on here, I was able to just use my phone as the interface. So no VNC, just basically using the web browser to connect. So hopefully there's something of value here. Again, everybody's operating style is different. Um, I like my style of operating. I like my gear selections. I don't mind the weight. Uh, I'm not gonna justify it anymore. That's just how it is. So, all right, guys, um, if you want to stick around for some bonus material, please do. Uh, if not, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, out of luck again. I'm going to connect to a station that is very close to me, 71 kilometers. There we go. I think we finally got it here, guys. So 71 kilometers away, I'm trying to connect to November Zero Delta Alpha Juliet. And it looks like we're connected. We're gonna crank this bad boy up. That's music to my ears. Oh yeah, we are way connected. I'll put the uh, screen capture on the uh, display here, but Let's see if we're able to receive some messages. If we are, I'm gonna call this a day and my HF portable man pack with digital a success. Oh yeah, I'm starting to see some messages here, guys. Let's see. I've got a couple messages it looks like from, from Don. KK4QAM, uh, he's got a cool channel. Uh, I think he's a new YouTuber. Uh, he's on the uh, JerryNet. I'll link him down below. But let's see if we get his messages. And it looks like um, Tango Oscar Mike with uh, Tango Oscar Mike. I think it's Radio Adventure. So it looks like a email is coming from him as well. It looks like I also have an acknowledgement from Winlink. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with this whole process, um, this video may be a little dry compared to my other ones, but kind of the point is this is about my 10th attempt, including the attempt we did this morning in the Tonto National Forest to get Winlink to do a proper connection and receive messages. So it looks like I've got about six messages in the queue. Hopefully we have enough batteries left 
Uh, the solar panels are actually in my pack on the inside. So keep your fingers crossed. If not, you get the point that everything we're trying to do here requires patience and the right windows of operation and the right conditions. All right, cool. So we got one coming through. Um, message for video. Let's click through on that guy. And it's from Don. So thanks a lot, Don. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm rambling, but uh, this isn't normally how I like to do videos. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, we have comms test. And that's from Tango Oscar Mike. Thanks a lot, Tom. I appreciate it. Um, I'll send you guys an email later. So I'll have that uh, in the inbox uh, tonight and probably try to send it out tomorrow. So we've got actually three emails back. We also have the acknowledgement from the Winlink Wednesday net check-in. Let's pack her up. All of this was made possible by this little bit of PVC on this $3 Cobra head connector. And I actually picked up this uh, copper wire from the Goodwill for $1.49, going about 33 feet in that direction and 33 feet in that direction. Hey guys, the point here is uh, you can get on the air with uh, Windlink and uh, you don't need more than five or six watts. Uh, it does require a little bit of patience, as you saw. I think I did about 10 attempts today. And uh, my little wire antenna for 40 meters is only about five feet off the ground. And uh, the antenna build in this case is even cheaper than the one I did on the channel, since I bought um, solid copper wire from the Goodwill for $1.49 and put it on another Cobra head connector on just another $10 worth of RG174 feed line going into the coach. All right, this has been probably my worst video in terms of cutting it together, but uh, sometimes this is what it looks like uh, when stuff doesn't go your way. But in the end, it all worked, and I was able to knock out and receive those emails. So big thanks to you, Tom, uh, Don, and uh, the Winlink coordinator. I forgot your name, but I really do appreciate you guys sending me those messages. Didn't have a chance to send any out today, but uh, I will call the receive a success. Signing out, guys.